Hey guys, today I'm going to answer the question that everybody has been asking. What are the top 10 best and worst aspects of the Toyota Land Cruiser 300 series, in my opinion? Specifically, the GR Sport. Let's get into the best bits to start with. Number one, oh yes, that the badge it doesn't matter if you aren't interested in cars at all or you even know someone that has had a toyota that broke down toyota is still one of the most recognizable brands in the world and has a reputation for reliability and trust toyota has been making vehicles now since 1936 so it has extensive experience in manufacturing as well as decades of knowledge in what works and what doesn't Toyota has one of the best resale value ratings in Australia as well. Without giving you financial advice, you can buy a Land Cruiser and pretty much get your money back or close to after about two or three years of ownership or even more. It's, it's just crazy, these things. Number two, the relentless off-road capability. The Land Cruiser has been known to be a pure off-road car for decades now, and you can go pretty much around Australia and know that you'll probably get around more so than any other brand new vehicle on the market. The 300 series does come with an extra 15 millimeters of ground clearance over the 200 series. So now it's rated at 245 millimeters. And the GR Sport comes with a first for Toyota, electronic disconnecting sway bars. The GR Sport also comes with front, center, and rear differential locks, which is just crazy for a production car, let alone a big family wagon like this, as well as low range and various drive modes. Number three, this is a touchy one, live axle rear suspension. The new model does come with live axle rear suspension, but not live axle front suspension, like the 70 series. But that means it does provide the 300 series does provide decent on-road stability and handling compared with the 70 series. However, I think most fans will appreciate the fact that Toyota has kept a live axle at the back, even though this does jump to the newer TNGA platform. It's the heavy duty version of the platform that underpins a lot of those big American pickup trucks. Number four, it's massive. If you're watching from America, you probably class this as a compact city runabout. But here in Australia, if you need a large family SUV with a humongous boot and five big seats, the Land Cruiser is literally one of only two vehicles registered in the upper large vehicle category with the Nissan Patrol. It's five meters long and two meters wide and pretty much two meters tall. It's big. Number five, towing capacity. Yes, it is at the maximum allowed rate in Australia for a passenger vehicle at 3,500 kilograms, but it's the gross combination mass that you should be looking at, not just the towing capacity. And the 300 series is rated to 6,750 kilograms. So even if you take away the 2.5, 2.6 tonne weight of the vehicle and the three and a half tonne towing capacity, you're still left with around six or 700 kilograms for cargo and passengers. A lot of people get that wrong. They think that the towing capacity is the, is the main figure that you should look at, but it's not. It's the gross combination mass. If the car isn't able to carry, including its passengers and cargo, the trailer and the vehicle weight, as all falls under the, the GCM, that's fine. But if it's, it's sometimes it can be very, very close. And a lot of the utes out there, if you actually hook up a three and a half ton trailer, you're left with very little, little for passengers or cargo. Whereas this big boy can carry a big heavy trailer and cargo and passengers. Number six, user friendly. Toyota vehicles are known for being very user friendly and practical and the 300 series is no different. If we have a look inside, all of the controls are in expected positions like steering wheel buttons for the volume, cruise control and everything like that. And then on the dash, there is quite a large number of buttons scattered all over the place, but even still, you can easily select what you want without looking around too much. It's also got cup holders, front and back, big bottle holders as well in the doors. Nice big grab handle, and of course a massive boot, complete with a 100 watt 
Australian plug socket on the back wall there. Number seven, visibility. So this thing, being so high up, you've got awesome visibility. You can see straight over that side mirror, straight out the front as well, and even you can see the bonnet, where the bonnet ends. And I'm, I'm pretty short too, so I can still see that, even with my seat at a pretty low position. So you've got a great idea of where you are positioned on the road. The GR Sport also comes with a comprehensive surround view camera system, including for off-roading. Number eight, the look. So the GR Sport comes with the fashionable black highlights or dark gray highlights, including for the side mirrors, the front grille, and the alloy wheels. So good on Toyota for merging with current fashions and trends. Number nine, the V6 engine. Yes, fans of the old V8 are going to whinge until the cows come home that it's not a V8 anymore. But let me tell you, this is more powerful, quite a bit more powerful, 27 more kilowatts, and has a lot more torque, 50 newton meters of extra torque over the old V8. It's also more efficient and quicker. I've done lots of testing with the 200 series and the 300 series, pretty much all the, the model grades and the V6 has come up with quicker results every single time. Not convinced? Here's some footage showing a comparison between the 200 series and the 300 series across the 0 to 100 sprint. Number 10, features. So the GR Sport is quite high up in the range and it comes with pretty much everything, including a cooler box or fridge in the middle there. So you can actually put some drinks down in there and it will keep them nice and cool. Not only that though, it's got wood trimmings on the steering wheel, four zone climate control, all the drive modes that you could ever possibly need and a nice big touch screen. In the back, you've got full climate control as well as three different charging ports and even seat heating and cooling on the outer seats, as well as cup holders and bottle holders in the doors as well. So there are a lot of reasons to buy a 300 series Land Cruiser and a lot of, lot of reasons to like it. What are the worst things about the Land Cruiser, in my opinion? Number one on-road stability. So due to the heavy duty underpinnings, this doesn't offer the best on-road handling compared with other seven seat SUVs and probably more so crossovers. So a crossover will handle better than this with a monocoque chassis compared with a full ladder frame like this has. But also this is made to go off-road, so it needs to perform off-road as well. And a lot of those SUVs and crossovers don't really perform off-road, whereas this has to do a bit of both. But if you're planning to buy one of these and all you want to do is drive around the city or the suburbs, you're kind of missing the point. And really, you're wasting your money because this thing is a bit cumbersome around tighter streets. The suspension sort of shudders a bit over, over corrugations. I'm talking compared with a crossover or sedan, that is. And the steering is not quite as engaging as it is in some crossovers and large wagons. Number two, no split tailgate. So this comes with a single swinging tailgate with no section that folds down here like it used to. It just means that that tailgate sticks right out and you can't use the lower split section as a workbench or even a seat to look out while you're camping or something. Number three, while we're back here, there's no seven seat option for the GR Sport. While the other variants come with seven seats, the GR Sport is a five seat only model, just like the base GX. It's just a bit strange that Toyota doesn't offer it at least as an option, considering this whole setup can accommodate two extra seats in the back, like it is possible. There's even cup holders still in the back here. Number four a high floor. With the ladder frame underneath, it does bring up the whole body and it means the floor is actually surprisingly high. And when you get in, 
I'm not very tall, but if you were pretty tall, your knees would start to actually lift up. There is decent leg room at the back here, but it's, yeah, it's, it's just the floor is higher than you might expect. I do remember the 200 series being a little bit worse than this. So I think Toyota has made some effort to try, to try and drop the floor down or raise the seat up a bit. Headroom is very good though. I've got plenty of clearance. And even if you are tall, I think you'd be okay back here. You can actually recline this seat as well. So this one is slightly reclined. So that gives you a bit more clearance. Number five, button placement. So inside, there is a big scattering of buttons, as I mentioned, but some of them just don't seem like they are in logical positions. For example, you've got the center diff lock button there, and then the, not sure if you can see that, but front and rear diff lock buttons are here. And there's actually a blank button next to it, which will be perfect for the center diff lock button. It'd just be a bit nicer if all the controls were in one spot so you didn't have to go looking around. I said before this is very practical and user friendly. It is, it's just some of the specialist features like the diff locks are just, yeah, strangely positioned. Having the volume controls on a button is also a bit of a no-no in my books. Some people don't mind them, but I just think they're a bit fiddly compared with just quickly twisting a knob. Number six, the 10 speed automatic. This replaces the old six speed. It is a very advanced unit and it helps to maximize the output of this new V6 engine, but it does hunt around a bit and it kind of feels like a CVT at times. It just doesn't have that sort of fully engaged feeling in some of the gears. Number seven, beeps. Oh, this car has so many beeps and things. I'm surprised one isn't going off now because I've got the door open. So there's one for the boots when you're closing or opening the boots the whole time and if you turn the engine off attention check the rear seats some other vehicles do beep even more than this but yeah enough with the beeps number eight easy scratch paint I don't know I can't confirm this but this car does seem to have a lot of little scuff scuffy sort of scratches on it as far as I know, it has actually been around Australia. It's had a lot of, a lot of testing this press car, but yeah, there's a lot of little, little scrapes and things. It just seems like they're very fine, and maybe Toyota could apply a more heavy-duty paint, paint system, knowing that their cars are going to go off-road. I mean, it is good that the lower bars are black plastic, including around the wheel arches, so you do have a bit of protection there. You don't have to worry about scratching the paintwork, including at the back. And that looks pretty shitty too, actually. There is a panel that goes there if you take the tow bar off, but with the tow bar on, yeah, that looks quite awful. Number nine, cheap looking and cheap feeling bits inside. Most of it does have this sort of fake leather on the upper parts of the dash, and even the, the top part there is sort of this soft material, and there's leather or leather style material all around the center console. But there are various spots that have very cheap plastic and it just doesn't match the price tag of the car. So this is a $150,000 car roughly by the time you include on-road costs. And just yeah, some bits have very ordinary plastics, including in the boot actually. Just wait for those beeps to finish. But yeah, all of this sidewall is all very hard plastic. I mean, it is good to have hard plastics on the wall because it means it is hard wearing. So I get where Toyota is going with that. But just some parts, I think they could have done better with some of the trimmings. And then number 10, it has to be the waiting list. So if you order one of these in Australia today, you're going to be waiting at least 12 months before you get one. I mean, you might get lucky if you look around, there might be a cancelled order on the lot. But chances are, yeah, you're going to be waiting quite a long time. If you are thinking of buying a Land Cruiser, just keep in mind that this is a dedicated off-road machine, first and foremost, in my opinion. If you don't need to go off-road, then there are other SUVs and crossovers that might be more suitable, use a little bit less petrol, they don't have the big all-terrain tires, and it is going to be cheaper to run. And it's not going to be as expensive up front. But if you do need a machine to go around Australia with your family, the GR Sport Land Cruiser is absolutely awesome. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe as it will help this channel grow.
Thanks for watching.